Uh, the True Summer Championship with me, Lothar, and Sotil on the casting bench, not a couch. So, for the sake of uh, a little bit of a recap, we had a match that just happened, uh, and Powder beat his opponent, Pokrovat, right? Pokrovak, yeah. Pokrovak. the name. Yeah. And uh, it turns out, Agro Shaman's pretty good at taking games out of people. Yeah. Unless we were sending kind of provokes people to use that kind of decks, which can take a uh, serious advantage of being just overly aggressive. Yeah, and we're talking about some oppressive cards like Tomb Hammer. Maybe that will get changed in the future. I think so as well, and I think we all agree here that... I, I feel like the cards, like the tentacles that they just released right. might indicate that <laughs> Doom Hammer is getting a bit of a, a nerf a nerf hammer hit. Right, so if, if you look at the new tentacles card, like how many times do you have to equip that thing to get Doom Hammer value out of it, right? Like four, four times? Like it's 20 mana to match no what Wind Doom Hammer Fury. does and you don't have Wind Fury, so... That was my point Yeah, as well. it's crazy. You just get one attack each turn, right. so you don't even have that value trait for, you know, killing just two, two minions. Pretty each much. Turn. Yeah. So, uh, basically, the uh, Agro Shaman ended up doing a lot of work for uh, Powder. I wouldn't be, I mean, we've seen a ton of it in the tournament so far. It's no surprise, really. Now, however, it's not quite over. There's going to be Modern Leper facing off against uh, Pokrovak, which is going to give him a chance to maybe get to the top eight tomorrow. It's going to be a bit difficult. I mean, Modern Leper seems tilted. Um, I, I was watching him on the floor. He was way over the top tilted from the loss that he incurred on the first, uh, first part of this uh, Top 16. Which was to Pokrovac as well. This is the right. revenge matchup, so yeah. We'll see whether or not he's able to take it. Well, I was watching backstage uh, where G2 players were playing. Yes. And Arden U was just tilting all over the place. He, he is tilted? Yeah. i never seen him so, you know, on tilt. Really? Right now. So okay. Wow. All right. He can life coach come in and uh, salvage this? or. We'll see, we'll see. Well, Tice and Life Coach both won their games, uh, their first games in the group, so we'll see them here on stage. Uh, we don't know about RDU yet, but yeah. But now, Martin Leper versus, versus Pokrovac. Right, uh, I, from what I hear, uh, Pokrovac kind of did an impression at the Winters uh, Championships. Right? right, I think um, he in the in the EU version, he was one of the, the top four players who we all agreed the top four were the, the best four players that we saw there overall, and we would be happy to have any of them in the final, any of them come out as the winner. So he was overall very impressive. Also um, got to know him a bit through the, the interviews and just talking to him outside. And you can sometimes tell when you talk to people this guy is a good Hearthstone player, right? Like, he says intelligent things about the game. He thinks about the game the right way. So I was really impressed with him. No great surprise to see him come through the stack Swiss here as well. Yeah, Modern Leper, however, one of the great UK players, uh, as it stands. A little bit on the, uh, I want to say, over-emotional side. Yeah, he is a, a player who can get tilted very easily. He's um, easily frustrated about the game in general. Um, I saw, I, I saw him, I, I saw him tweet last night that you know he's sure he went seven and zero through Swiss, but he still doesn't like the game very much right now. Wow, so, okay. Um, yeah, obviously. Banned. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> zero one start to the day today obviously didn't help him out, and uh, yeah. that opening hand isn't going to help him out too much either. Mulligans it away, gets a much nicer earlier curve with the Voidwalker and Dark Peddler. Yeah. So I'm sure like patron up top there for right. uh, Yeah, I'm sure that just that tweet itself made um, the game, you know, rigged. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course it did. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. I know Reyna complains a lot, and he gets, uh, you know, special people at Blizzard monitoring <laughs> every single action so that right. they can rig the RNG for or against him, depending on how they feel. I think that's entirely legitimate. I'm yes. sure there is nothing wrong with that theory whatsoever. Every, every word that comes from Raynad's mouth is like gospel itself Absolutely. passed down from the head. It gets implemented in Hearthstone immediately. Yep. Anyway, Fiery War Axe is a hell of a card for Warrior against Zoo. Comes down here, is going to be able to pretty much completely pick apart Leper's early game here. Now you see Leper just nodding to himself there. Knife Juggler and Dark Peddler, his two choices this turn. Neither of which are particularly great against that War Axe. Yeah, his hand is actually very clunky. Yeah, it the, really is. The Owl, the Implosion, and the Lyra Jenkins are three cards that, are require, that require a specific scenario on the board to be played, right? Yep. The Lyra Jenkins is a finisher, the Implosion is just a reactive card to a minion that your opponent plays, and that minion can be unstable, most likely more can be a patron, and you can play it against a low tap as well, at least the next turn, right? So it seems very limited in this regard. Yeah, this opener is really difficult. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say patron probably of all the warrior archetypes um, has the best chance early game to defuse the zoo. Flood, oh, for sure. Just yeah. because of their ability to play ghouls, armor smiths, like every single warrior, except they had that extra two drop. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, if Zoo can get ahead, they can uh, quickly rush them down out of the game if they aren't able to, to draw the right answers. But Modern Leper, one of the few players in this tournament that seems to be sticking with the Leroy Sea Giant version of Zoo, and one of the criticisms of this deck, on, honestly, similar criticism to the Voicaller Malganis version that we're seeing is that they have more clunky cards, more situational cards, more awkward high mana cards. Um, is the reason why a while ago everyone switched back to the faster version, and now we're seeing the evolution go back the other way. But Leper here definitely being punished a little bit by having all these situational cards in his deck. I agree with you about the comparison in general, but I think that the Void Color version in general has more proactive uh, minions yeah. anyway. Because right. you can play the Void Color even right. if it's not the full value without the sure. in the hand, yeah. right? It's still a 3 or 4 minion that gets some pressure. Um, on the board and still bluffs your opponent. Right. If you have those demons, if you don't have those demons, is there an answer to it? Morganis, if it being dropped, maybe a flaming will get buffed and so on. And having just a little Jenkins in hand is hard. Is usually you just want that to finish up the game. You will not play it unless you're just winning. And Sea Giant requires a lot of synergy. The same stuff for Encanto Meccano. If you have board, perfect. Then you right, the Chinese rely on list on that uh, was popularized uh, a while back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you still rely on uh, RNG and on having the board when the deck like Pat Patron can just punish you for overextending heaven, right? Or Contra Warrior, whatsoever. Yep. Awkward situation on the board right now for Leper. Doesn't want to send that knife juggler into the unstable goal if he can avoid it, but his only solution on that turn was the implosion, which obviously is not really <laughs> any that's better. Not, that's so, even worse. Yeah, so <laughs> he's just going to suck it up here, trade his knife juggler into the unstable goal. Just a creeper on board, so he's not successfully getting any pressure down right now. It's just giving the patrons so much time to just set up these big turns later on in the game. Yep. Agree. Imagine if that implosion would hit for two, yeah. and then the juggles wouldn't kill the Go face, and then you lose everything <laughs> yeah. for no gain. I mean, this is kind of the textbook um, bad opener against Patreon, where they've got the double ghoul, and you have no minions that can actually survive it. And Lothab's a really nice drop here. He could have played Sludge Belcher, but then something like Power Overwhelming, or specifically Power Overwhelming, comes into play and can trade out effectively. So Lothab is much stickier on the board against what you'd expect your opponent to have. You're basically making them have two separate minion buffs to be able to trade up effectively on this board now. Yeah, basically two surgeons. Right, that's Because no one plays it. anymore the uh, Dark Iron Dwarves. The right. Dark Iron Dwarves, yeah. It, it, it is seen occasionally, I'd say, but it's not the most popular thing. Uh, it came back of recent memory in a few zoo lists that mm -hmm. we saw in uh, some of competitive tournaments. I, I think, again, the, the Enhanced Meccano that you mentioned is yeah. kind of taking up that spot, which, again, kind right. of plays back to that situational thing, because a Dark Iron Dwarf is a card that you can just play as a 4-4. Four -four, That's what I, exactly what like, I wanted to say. 4-mana Bloodfen Raptor? No thanks, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> just a Dark Iron Dwarf in general is a better card than right. Encanto Meccano, yeah. so I don't see a point in playing the Encanto Right, it can be a little clunky. Like it, I, I feel like... The only time where it completely blew out uh, a game that otherwise was in a pretty tough spot was uh, the Star Ladder tournament. Uh, I remember that fondly, where basically Wind Fury was everywhere. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Going face here from uh, Pokrovac means that the uh, the Sea Giant is going to be extremely cheap for Modern yep. Leper this turn, and no Execute in hand right now for uh, Pokrovac, but I can understand with that Gromash threat coming out very soon that he values that 5 damage to face pretty heavily right now. It's a lot, especially if the Warlock has a clunky hand, I and mean, yep. it seems like it has the yeah, clunky yeah. hand, so he will tap more right. than usual, and that means he will be getting in range much faster. But at the same time, um, the Implosion now will be doing work. Yep, so he's going to go ahead and implosion. This means he will be able to play a Sea Giant no matter what. This That's the worst possible outcome, and he still gets a two-mana Sea Giant. So he was secure in being able to do that this turn. Can still trade into the Sludge Belcher reasonably effectively, but four would have been a, a huge blowout on this turn. Uh, what well, about coin out the dire wolf. Yeah, coin yep. out the Giant yep. after the Dire Wolf. Yep. The problem is now the board is full, so that's not even... Uh, but it can still... Uh, oh, you can't do it. Uh, Whoa! No! Uh, mistake! You had a full board! Why did you do Lepa. this? <laughs> Lepa is tilting! That uh, was an error. It that was indeed. Was error. So he, his thinking there is he calculated that the Belcher was going to leave behind a minion and thought, okay, the board state is the same, but he forgot right. about his minion dying in the process. So yep. he's missed out on a Sea Giant here, and now his board is very quickly disappearing. Uh, luckily for him, he is now still able to play that Sea Giant, but nowhere near as swingy as the one mana card that it could have been last time. 
That's true. I had the same impression generally when I just saw that he was picking up the dire wolf, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. But then I was started counting, and I was like, oh, right. right, the, the board is going to be full. <laughs> yeah, you fill your board so you can't play it, and then as soon as you make space, then the sea giant makes too much mana. So you actually did just have to play it for two mana and not play the dire wolf if you were going to go down that line. Oh, I mean, the, the edit is still very effective on this uh, on this board. The problem is now because of the death bite and the cruel taskmaster, it'll just blow up, right? Like, sure, the warrior will take damage in the process if he wants, but... That doesn't really matter because you know that even if your opponent runs burst, bursty Warlock, it's, it's not, not enough. enough to kill him next right. turn, and he can just develop the board and draw so many cards. It's just most likely almost impossible to not draw an answer to in the next two turns just to the situation on board. So Sea Giant would be pretty good on the board field with patrons. If Execute gets picked up, that's going to be an answer for Pokrovak, but doesn't find it, so the 8 attack minion is still going to be alive, and look at that! <laughs> yeah, but it's still on 16. One more mana and you could play Leroy, right? Yeah. Which with still <laughs> only no, 22. Which would have been good. If he would have a PO and then a hit the right. Wind Fury from the end cancel the kind of awesome. Yep. But that's like such an unlikely scenario, mm -hmm. right? You have right. four different keywords that can happen on each minion, so you need to hit specifically the 25%, it's like Shaman. You need Bran <laughs> Bronze Beard. Yeah, but I like, I like he has Implosion into Enhanced Mechano here, so he does still have the potential. If he gets like a couple of irritating taunts and the Sea Giant gets Wind Fury, there's still potential for things to happen. Just the Divine Shield on the Sea Giant, so... A lot of taunts. A lot of taunts, but minions. doesn't get to protect that, that Sea Giant with Wind Fury, which is what he would have been looking for there. And uh, a bunch of one health taunts are dealt with pretty efficiently by the card Whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, it's pretty good. You know. Spot like this. So a lot of space made for new patrons. Base damage being dealt. Yeah, he just has lethal with the Grom and the Grom the here, yep. And Modern Leper will concede it. Now again, I feel like the... I, I hope for him that he's not too tilted by the misplay that he made with the Direwolf Alpha. Um, it is something that I, at first glance, you would make the mistake. He played way too quickly and didn't spot it mm -hmm. in time. Um, but if that tilts him, then it's only going to get worse from here. Leper did mention to me uh, on day one that he, d after he played his first game on stream, that he really doesn't like playing on stream. It does. It's one of the things that does bother him. Um, okay. One of the many things that does bother him. <laughs> um, I would say that's one of the things that you get, have to get rid of as soon as possible. Right. Absolutely. If you yeah, want yeah. To be a pro player. Yeah, for sure. You have to get accustomed to the fact that you will be on the stream, on a stage. Yeah. Maybe even interviewed, or you know, have in general contact with yeah. right with people. the people <laughs> will see you play yeah that's I mean, leper is someone that i've played a lot in in uk tournaments and european tournaments so i watch his stream pretty regularly we talk about the game a decent amount i know he's a very very strong player like that mistake with the sea giant is just way below his level as a player so Absolutely. there is there's outside factors that come into that but it is a pretty horrible mistake for a player at this level to be making like no no excuses to be made yeah modern leper here picks up the wild growth which as we all know is probably one of the most one of the cards that changes the win rate of Druid the most when you pick it up in the early game. Oh, so it's always for him. Right? It turns out uh, that patrons don't come out on curve and flood the board. That is one of the most efficient ways to bury the Druid under pressure. Yeah, well, honestly, this uh, this start of Fiery War Axe into Coin Shredder into Shredder is a pretty solid opener against Druid as well, just to get the, the sticky, aggressive stuff on the board. Um, since the change from the Warsong patron deck to this more mid-rangey patron deck, you can beat Druid just by kind of tempoing out with your early minions, and depending on what you have in the 4-drop slot, making big yeah, Dread Corsair swings, getting your Shredders down. So he's actually got a pretty solid hand here just to fight for the board honestly against Druid without relying on that big patron swing. I was going to mention as well, like there, there's that weird turn where, where Druid plays Root of the Claw on curve, and you've got a Shredder already established. You can use Cruel Taskmaster or Inner Rage right. to trade up very effectively. And with the weapons giving you, you know, say, two for ones in many cases as a warrior, that also plays into the whole tempoing a Druid out as a warrior. Right, it's, it's kind of similar in to, in to how uh, Zoo deals with Druid minions, because you get a minion consolidated, even if it's something small like an Armorsmith, and then suddenly you have all these utility cards like Slam, Cruel Taskmaster, Inner Rage, right. that can buff your dudes up yeah. into their dudes and get you an advantage on the board if you go. Well, that's okay. Sure. Terrible. Too bad. If you had actually left the board on the board, that would have been right. dramatic for him, because he plays against Patreon here. 
Yep, keeping the shade in stealth by uh, for now. Doesn't want to expose it to that fiery war axe just yet, even though he did give up a lot of damage with the savage roar there. Missed out on five damage to face, but he feels like he can get more value out of that shade long term by keeping it in stealth, and I'd be inclined to agree with him at this point. And now by the, making the attack, he also gets the information for Model Leopard that I probably have another weapon in my hand. Right. So why, why would I attack it with it otherwise? Yep. That's something that you have to keep in mind. So Model Leopard might actually think twice about playing the Azure Drake, but unfortunately for him, there are no other good options. Yeah, not really. Uh, it Ooh, looks like Leopard's going to go opt for the Force of Nature okay. here, which can work out pretty badly here, depending on what comes out of the Shredder. And it is and a 2-3! Two two three. Three. And that's a very bad outcome. For I, I would just want to say that Force of Nature is such a risky play here right now that might not pay off, and even if it pay, pays off, yep. you should just pay a 6-mana card for a Pulse Shredder which is a 4-mana card, and yep. you lose half of your combo when you use already one uh, force of um, Savage Roll. Right, there's there's two threes, one threes, four threes, all kinds of varieties of minion that can stealth come out of that. Minions, Ste yeah, yeah, stealth divine minions, shield, divine shield, shield. Stop, right? yeah. So, bit tricky there. Modern Leper, I think, was uh, simply banking on the fact that he could use his hero power to kill two threes and four threes, and follow it up with a Drake on seven, uh, which should be enough pressure from his perspective to transition to turn eight, nine where he can finally play that Ancient of Lore to replenish his options. Mm. But now you see the, the implication of that decision to hold the Shade earlier. He could have been greedy and just got the five damage in with the Savage Roar earlier. Uh, the Warrior would have swung his Fiery war, war Axe at it, taken three more damage. You could have been okay with that eight damage as progress as the Druid player. But now by keeping it in stealth, he has the opportunity here to swing this board state by having that free attack in the bank from the stealth minion. So he now has the Azadrake consolidated on the board against nothing. Yeah, but he knows that there's the Death Spite. You know, right, he knows there's a weapon. So. Hopefully for him, it's not a Death Spite, but it is. Yeah, I, I would say that the chances of... Um, the chances are 66 to 33, right? Or They're pretty high, yeah. The and uh, you know, the Fire uh, War Axe was used up as well, which yeah. means I do not need three attack. Right. Exactly. So trading up here with, with the Shade of the Next Ramas feels kind of awkward to me. Yeah, I mean, there was the option that turn. Instead of using Hero Power, you could have innovated Keeper of the Grove for two damage to kill the 2-1. So that way you have two minions in play. You're more consolidated against the Death Spite option. I think that was what uh, Leper was considering when he paused. But Keeper of the Grove is one of the best cards to have in your hand in this matchup in emergency situations to snipe down patrons, silence 3-3 three, three patrons. It's a really strong utility right. card overall. So. so here he's playing into Execute. Uh, but the Execute would cost six mana if the Pokrovac had it. However, he's got the Cruel Taskmaster and the Inner Rage, which can make the Armorsmith just big enough to trade with the other minion that's on the board. And that is awesome. Yeah. That's yeah, it's really, really good. He picks up some armor in the process, can even attack with the Death Spite um, as the last thing that he does before trading to sequence some more armor if he wants to do it that way. So it's a very flexible turn this turn from, from Pokrovac. He could even just go down a line where he plays minions onto the board um, and gets maximum armor with double Armorsmith as well. Ooh. What about just Dr. Boom? Is Dr. There? Boom is a plan as well. So my question if you play Dr. Boom is, how scared are you? You saw a very liberally used Force of Nature, a very liberally used earlier Savage War. I guess Savage War less liberally. Uh, are you afraid of that combo second copy being in the opponent's hand? I would say you're not uh, afraid of it, because if he keeps tr keeps track of what was used from the hand, you're aware that the Emperor and the Savage Roar were drawn after Later. the right. two Innovates right. and the Keeper from the left side that was played. So you're, sh you're aware that the only one card was kept in the hand. So you you are sure that when your opponent was playing Savage Roar and Force of Nature, he had no other options. So the only two draws could have been the other part of the combo. Right. So I mean, in a spot like this, if you're Modern Leopard, do you ever consider simply silencing off the Armor Smith and hoping that going full face is a winning play? over the long game, because you do have another Force of Nature lying around. Uh, so what have you seen from your opponent? This is the first Armor Smith that you've seen, and I don't think right. you've seen Unstable Ghouls either come out yet. There was the one from there the was Shredder, one shredder but, but that was, <laughs> that not, that was not from right. the deck. So there's still a lot of defensive options left in your opponent's hand, so I'm not sure that's a line that's going to pay out for you, especially when you don't even have the damage saved up in your hand yet, and there's only one Force of Nature left in the deck. It all comes down to the first Force of Nature. Right. right. It, it was really important to hold on it, uh, hold, hold on, because even if you get the second Savage Roar, sometimes you just needed to clear the board from patrons, and that, that's like your only way of making a comeback in this situation. But this seems just horrible. Yeah, so uh, Pokrovac is spending his turn just stacking up on armor and drawing cards, and uh, Modern Leper looks like he hates every last little thing about his life right now. 
Uh, he does not look particularly interested in this game of Hearthstone right now. Yep, well, Warrior is almost at standard life, yep. 28, yep. to our left. He, he does keep drawing some, some decent value cards here. He had an awkward hand, but he's picked up both of his Ancient of Laws now, which honestly is the only thing even remotely keeping him in this game. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's got such an uphill climb now, because even now, Noxious, as you mentioned on the previous turn, that option for just pushing for straight burst damage is being taken away from right. him by that double Armorsmith. So now the, the Wrath has to be used on the 3-3 free free Armorsmith. Otherwise, I don't see a point even in allowing your opponent to stack up armor next turn. Right. If you allow this and you just leave the two armor smiths on board against our patron warrior that has a full hand, almost a full hand, it will just generate so much armor, you will not be able to close out the game because you already use one force of nature, you already use one savage or So even with minions being on the board, most likely the warrior will have options to kill you. To clean up. All right, so he wants to get rid of these two armor smiths, right? So but he can't. This does the same thing as Wrath and Wrath Attacking and would have done. So he is literally right. valuing a Wrath in his hand over a Savage Roar in his hand at this point. Yeah. So this is why I stopped mid-sentence. Right. I am a little confused. I mean, the, the only presentation I can give to it is that he's valuing Wrath as a card that he might need to answer patrons. But I feel at this point, like, if the patrons come out, you just don't have enough left in the tank to deal with that. Like, if the patrons come out on top of all this stuff that he's had here, then you probably just lost the game. So I feel like just using the Wrath there and just making the trade on board, keeping that Savage Roar in your hand is, uh, Although, is a more reasonable I will play. say this, though, for this spot. Um, if, like, with Judah the Claw and Wrath, that gives you answers to a few patrons. You've seen a Whirlwind already, you've seen a Dead Spy. So the amount of enablers for patrons, you know, there's not as many of them. There's still enough to, to sure. really just blow you out. Um, but if your goal is maybe to just starve the, the, the warrior of patrons and then have a single minion left, just one, let's say, Dr. Boom later in the game, right. that might be sufficient to push through. I'm sure, like, Leper isn't going to have you know, missed the Wrath play. He right. would have assessed both right. those options. And his, it, his mind, he is valuing a Wrath in his hand over a Savage Roar in his hand. That is just how that turn's worked out. We can, you know, try and guess what his reasoning is, but we'd have to talk to him afterwards to specifically figure out what the thinking was there. Yeah. Well, patrons will be coming out from uh, Oklovak here. We have the patron with the Inner Rage and the Whirlwind. Card draw, armor galore, everything is going to stack up. I imagine he will attempt to kill this armor spell. Uh, no, he's just going to go full taunt form here. So, All right, um, well, good luck. This is, uh, gonna be, <laughs> this is going to be a hell of a turn. Just Goodness patron gracious. Patron doing patron things here. He had the opportunity to uh, kill the 4-6 this turn if he wanted to, but at the cost of one less patron. If he enraged one of the minions that could have attacked, then that's uh, six total damage after the two whirlwinds going into the Druid of the Claw. So. There are still two executes in the deck. Right. So you have a lot of options um, to draw the card. Yep, agreed. Uh, could have just chosen to play it safe there. Frolling Berserker doesn't get the execute, so that 4-4 bear is going to get to survive, but really not a big deal on this board. He can choose to play down the Unstable Ghoul now if he wants to, but that does set up potential turns with overfilling the board with patrons and then answering with swipe. Yep. So let's see, what are the options? Basically, there are no options. So if the, if the, wild, <laughs> girl, if the wild Girl draws a Wrath, that's a full patron clear, right? So it is important that he picks up at least one more piece of removal to get rid of the uh, the other three, uh, the, at least one of the two patrons left. Yeah, so here he can kill the 3-1 with his hero power. Yeah, he's so instead of going for the draw to hit exactly Wrath, he's just going to create the situation where there's just one 3-3 three, three patron left with nothing on the board it can attack into to duplicate. Obviously, he feels it's a more solid line than the one draw to hit uh, Wrath because he commits that mana to Wild Growth. He doesn't have the, the mana to hero power down the 3 1 here. So uh, he's going to go for this line, but still, there is a, another whirlwind to follow this up with the unstable ghoul as well. So the patrons will continue to spawn him. And the battle rage, so just refill the hand. Right. In case no options were thrown. Yeah. Just on the options. This Floating Berserker enough. will have so much attack. So I, I guess at this point, Modern Leper is staying in the game for information's sake, more so than the victory. I think it's kind of slipped away from him a few turns ago. Yeah, Fiery War Axe gets equipped. Slayer. Doesn't see any particular reason to press the armor button when he's already chilling at 50 health. So he's just going to equip <laughs> that axe, smash him in the face, set up lethal for the following turn. Just has Grom, even if his board gets answered here. So this is probably going to be a quick 2-0 here from Pokrovac, making a very impressive showing here in the UK. And he will be left with the um, Patron Warrior against a Shaman, right. which is not a great matchup for the Shaman to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, very, very winnable for the uh, for the Warrior player, unless we see a similar draw to uh, what happened yeah, in the previous exactly. series. I, I wanted to mention that. It could yeah. be a blowout again, uh, unfortunately, for Bokrovac. It, it could happen. Uh, Mon Leopard is going to assess his options here. With silence is available and a wrath, but still not enough to get the job done. It might be from his perspective, but even if he did find the magical board clear here, then Grom plus the weapon is going to come down on the following turn and finish out the game. So He can get all a middle of... Um Look at Warrior. Sure. Wouldn't be better than to just wrap this. Hmm. Nice. We'll see what comes out of the Shredder here. If it's going to have any impact. But he's spawning so many patrons in this nice. process that it's difficult to imagine a Shredder drop that was going right. to get him out of that. There, there's really nothing there. Yet. Yeah. So All this right. is 2-0 for Pokerback. And that means that Modern Leopard is on the brink of elimination from the, uh, from the group. Yeah, unfortunate for him as well because he went 7 0 all the way through the Swiss. And then. This is what statistics looks like, right? right? You yeah, go yeah. flawlessly through the Swiss yep. and then you left like, on, the, on, the, on the mercy of the goddess of RNG and uh, statistics. And you will be like, okay, so I won seven games in a row. What are the odds of me now losing two <laughs> games in a row? Because when you think about it, someone that played 5 2 right. probably has better chances to go all, all the way now. Is, is that how maths works, Lothar? I'm not entirely sure. I'm just making a okay. comment. All right, fine. <laughs> but yeah, solid start here from the Agro Shaman. He is going to need it, because if you do not get the pressure down super early against this deck, then it can just easily take the game away from you. Keeps the Cruel Taskmaster, which will be a good answer to that Leper Gnome, but this is a solid-looking draw from Leper. Minions, minions, minions into Doomhammer, Doom which is exactly what you want. The Doomhammer in turn 5, and especially those Urgent Horse Riders, which are basically um, almost almost impossible to move away from the board with uh, with weapons, right? They deal a lot of damage and make the board presence really important. Board. Yeah, so the curve here appears to be Coin Totem Golem into Leper Gnome into Argent Horse Rider. Uh, Leper looks at his hand and sees it the same way, so he is going to start ramping up a decent amount of damage here. And if the Taskmaster is going to come down here to answer one of these minions, it's going to have to come down pretty much off curve, so we may see Cruel Taskmaster execute on the Totem Golem instead here. Also, the execute looks nicely, uh, nice here. You have probably no other options uh, when it comes to this deck to eliminate. From, uh, I mean, there's a pallet shredder, right? Right, there's like so potentially it. some shredder, feral spirit, tokens, uh, the, the your highest health minions along with totem golem. So, yeah, execute early against a totem golem is, is pretty solid overall. But 2 2 on the board now on curve against Argent Horse Rider means that Leper is going to be able to keep snowballing this game away. Thank you, Ultrain. I'm just thinking about a, um, the, the spirits. On this turn. Uh, so if he Feral Spirits this turn, he only has two mana on the following turn. Yes, but you don't want to have Overload on turn four. Right, but I, you can also just not play the Feral Spirits. You can go Argent Horse Rider this turn into Argent Horse Rider Leper Gnome next turn into Doomhammer. Um, it seems like a reasonable use of all your mana, and then you have Feral Spirits to follow up afterwards. But he is going to trade here and respect the 2-2 on the board. It's pretty interesting stuff. I wasn't seeing that. Uh, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. No. Uh. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, so he drew a second one drop to go with the Leper Gnome, which filled this out pretty nicely, but uh, I think I would have gone down the line with uh, just playing all the three drops, using all your mana, and then just equipping Doomhammer Overload free, and then having Feral Spirits to follow up. I actually think that in this situation, in this particular matchup, mm -hmm. the wall hero power might bring more value than the Hunter hero power, because you you are in need of that Rock Fighter so much. Sure. I think I'm overall with the with the Doom Hammer in hand already. I'm okay with the Hunter Hero Power, but I do agree with you. There is potential for a lot of life gain all of a sudden out of this Warrior deck, which means that you do need that Rock Fire to push through. But there is still a ton of damage in his hand already, and if you can start weaving in that Hero Power alongside these Argent Horse Riders mm -hmm. and the four damage from the Doom Hammer each turn, then it's going to be difficult to imagine a world where Pakrovac outlasts that. But has made a pretty irritating board this turn for Le Leper to have to decide whether he wants to deal with. Well, the armor smith has to be dealt with, right. right? So most likely the Doom Hammer will just deal double, twi uh, double, um, will just double strike the sure. Smith, yep. the Doom Hammer, deal twice the two damage, eliminate from the game, add two HP mm -hmm. um, to Pokrovac HP in general, uh, but then and just ignore the other minions, right? Because you can't really spare the damage, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like I said, the, the Armorsmith has to be dealt with, and that's what makes this board so annoying, because as soon as you commit to dealing with the Armorsmith, that Frothing Berserker is becoming a massive threat of his own. So a uh, really, really interesting situation where he might decide like that uh, Frothing Berserker is too much of a threat, but looks like he is just going to go through the... Yeah, he's going to choose to deal with it here, play for the board control, respect the Frothing Berserker, playing around weapons, things like Execute, so that the Frothing Berserker is able to activate the race and smash you back into face off. And Bokrovan has to be super happy about all those trades. The, even that one free minion that Merlock, uh that was staring at him was a threat, mm -hmm. right? It's still a consecutive damage that will be dealt each single turn if it's not dealt with. Yep. So all those trades were awesome for Bokrovan. And now he has, the only way that he can lose the game right now is multiple burst uh, high damage uh, output. So an example, Doomhammer Broke Binders, right? Yep. Otherwise, all the minions will be dealt with. Because you have the armor smith, you have the board controls, even a charge minion like Arjun Horse Rider probably will be attacked twice and just dead. Right. I will say, I think he's happy with the board specifically because um, what his hand looked like. So if his hand had a weapon and a whirlwind in it there, then he would have been begging for that frothing berserker to be left alive because he could have just chopped down the taunt, whirlwinded the board, smashed the shaman in the face for 12 or so damage, and suddenly the race is on and he's in a position. Um, this is definitely a style of aggro shaman that you can play where you just control the board using your, your minions and, and Doomhammer and just trust that the longer the game goes, especially when you have Hunter Hero Power, you have kind of inevitable damage over the course of the game. Seems to be the line that Lepa's going with here, and he has successfully run the warrior player out of cards at this point. Now he's considering attacking the Loth, uh, uh, maybe trying to damage it before the turn ends. But I don't think there's any purpose to this, considering you've got a Lightning Bolt as a follow-up, which will deal three damage to it anyway. And he's left with two charges on the Doomhammer, which is not perfect, of course. At the end of it. Ah, picks up a card draw, at least. Could have been a worse turn for... Uh, Ooh, Belcher is massive, has the inner rage to take care of the 2-1 as well, and now suddenly this wall is in the way, and that all the health that Leper has used trading with minions is now putting the warrior player in a situation where he can go for the race himself. Yeah, exactly. That's what that, that's the situation where you switch the gears right. and just go straight up. That, that damage is still a very damage. powerful turn for a modern Leper. Oh yeah. I thought Trog really turned the I mean this is a, a turn that could have gone complete disaster, but in this case, I think he's able to salvage it. But he lost the whole Doomhammer. Right. And that's that's problematic, right? Because yeah. your opponent will armor up, negate your hero power, so if there's a way to just kill the minions right now, you'll have a hard time. That's well, not a that's great, not a great draw. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Leper has basically used the entire Doomhammer for board control here in this matchup, so he has successfully got himself into a pretty advantageous board position, but um, it's it's a question of whether that was worth it, whether the race was on for the Warrior player, whether it was necessary to reduce the damage over time, but now he's in a position where uh, he might have to just fully commit again here and just a hero power is adding up, Lightning Bolt, take care of the minion, make sure this troll connects to base, and that weapon has to go into it again, meaning another five damage for the, for the Warrior player. Yeah, Modern Leper might need to top deck uh, Ancestral Knowledge or you know another Doomhammer in order to get the damage in. And this is why I wanted to say that maybe Death Spider was better less than just to have the activators for patrons ready, yep. for Execute, for maybe... Acolyte of Pain. Anything. Exactly. Right. So yeah, yeah. I was thinking maybe that, that, that weapon was a misplay. Yeah. Playing that for your, for, for your War X. He was probably trying to maximize the damage output, but really there's no difference in that deck aside from Totem Golem as far as what you're going to kill with four damage instead of three. Wow. One draw now. With that Gromash draw means that he is on the lethal clock here, so he literally has one draw four right damage. now. Four damage. Yeah. And that's not it. That is not four damage. That is only two. Uh, Flame Tongue Totem famously described by Chucky as a two mana Corcron Elite. Unfortunately, in this situation, not, more like not a blue getting the warrior. Job done. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, if the spider had been popped uh, for whatever reason, right, then perhaps. But in this spot, Modern Leper will fall down. And he's eliminated, right? Right, he's out. Modern Leper is done. No. Yeah, 7 0 through Swiss and then 1 in one and 2, unfortunately, in his group. Not good enough to make his way Happens. out. So the qualifiers from Group A for your top 8 will be uh, Pokerback and SK Gaming yep. Powder. From Group A. We'll have Group B a little bit uh, after this match. But I mean, just going back on the matches that were played there, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on one end we have sometimes the Agro Shaman doing complete blowout uh, and other times just fizzling. Is that 
pretty much the the story of the tournament. Because on one hand, like we saw a player like Ignite getting a crazy win streak with a 12-1 right. uh, before it really stopped working. So I have to wonder. It's it's aggro shaman's a deck I play a lot, and honestly, I think that style that Leper went for, for there is something you can win a lot of games with. I've had a lot of matchups against, you know, say Zoo, say um, midrange druid, where I've won the game on on turn 12, turn 13, or something. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but I'm not sure that Patron Warrior is one of the matchups where you want to go down that line in because. You're kind of extending the game and hoping that you're going to draw damage over time, but the second they just set up a patron board, you have no outs to that generally as the deck. So I feel like you just need to go all in as hard as possible in that matchup. Uh, Leper obviously has um, different opinions. That was a very deliberate decision from him to go down that line and that style of play. So um, he committed to it early with the Frothing Berserker, respected it as a big threat, and then followed it through uh, all the way. So at least he stuck to the game plan that he picked. Right. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm just kind of wondering why people keep Diluting the Shaman deck with cards like Flanking Totem. Uh, oh, diluting, okay, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry for my yeah, no problem. Um, I just, I was thinking Loot Hoarder, but no. <laughs> yeah. not, not quite <laughs> it. Looting so the Shaman diluting, deck. Yeah, I yeah. see what you mean, like with the like, Haunted Creepers coming back. Yeah, like, the Haunted Creepers. Haunted Creeper, like, Guild and Stalker, right, Pilot right, Shredder. Right. I understand stuff. the Guild and Stalker. Right, yeah, I think that's it's, a really good it's idea. Like, you know, just consecutive damage that yep. we at least deal that once. But the loot, ho uh, sorry, not uh, the haunted creeper is just such a slow minion that benefits, especially trading mm -hmm. and uh, and knife jugger situations, right? So that makes your shaman really slow, and you c keep trying to have the synergy with the flintum totem, which also makes the, the damage getting slower and slower. So yeah, I can exactly. see what you mean. Like I see o over the past. Well, yesterday, actually, with all the decks that we saw from Shaman, it seems like the style of Aggro Shaman has changed. Uh, right. At least in the event, the metagame of the Aggro Shaman is very different than what I would have expected. But it's and been fun. What I would add to that just very quickly is we've seen Go Shaman ahead. being brought to tournaments in the more old-fashioned, pure burn, pure right. force, pure face damage style. And the last few tournaments it's had a showing in, say, IEM Katowice and the two Blizzard events, the North America Finals, the Europe Finals, yeah. it's been a very underperforming deck. And now suddenly we see this board focus version brought to this tournament, and we're hearing all these stories about 11 0 Shaman blowouts, 3 0 Shaman blowouts from Powder. So maybe it's working. Maybe that is just the evolution of the deck. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going to Group B for the, um, the second match that we have today. The second group that is we have today. We're going to be casting the entire top 16 down to top 8 after this. So from my understanding, um, we'll be doing the winner's match and then the yes. decider's and match. Decider's group. Group. So yeah. there will be matches we will not see, but those are going to be kind of the, the, the last ones um, that we played. So we'll be taking a quick break, sponsorship break, and we'll be right back. It won't be too long, guys, so stay tuned.